And I went to this church sale and they were having a Brunswick stew and I love the fall, but whenever I see the Brunswick stew start coming out, I know that yard sale season is just about over. Hello everybody, welcome back to Commonwealth Picker. This is Kevin and me and Sophie. We're in the eBay cave tonight. Hi, Sophie. How you doing? It's a pretty lonely eBay cave today. The house is empty. The homeschool hustlers are both out. One's at gymnastics. One it's, one's at karate. And that means Blue Ridge Mama is gone, too. Even the cats are out hunting something. I can't, I can't quite find them out there. They're out there hunting something. So it's just me and Sophie here in the eBay cave. But we're going to take this opportunity to make this our giveaway day. And we're going to run, at the end of this video, we're going to run the random picker. And when we run that random picker, we're going to uh, pick one person to win each of these two mugs. And also, of course, the Fleet Inaman. And we'll throw in a few Commonwealth picker things. And I might even explain to you the dual meaning behind Commonwealth picker. Obviously, we're in the state of Virginia, but there's another meaning behind it, too. Plus, I'm a history teacher, and I could maybe even bore you to tears and tell you the history of this emblem right here. Maybe I'll throw that in at the end of the video for you uh, history fans out there. At any rate, let's take a look at what's sold today on this slow day, and we are going to, uh, at the very end of the video, put this on there and see who wins. All right, so we're going to take a look at what sold today. And we had a slow day, which is exactly why we're doing the giveaway on today's video. So we're going to pull that random selector at the very end. Hopefully when the homeschool hustlers are home. I know Reagan likes to do that, and so does Turner. So, And we'll announce the two winners, and we'll give them a couple days to watch this video, hopefully. And uh, if they respond, give me an address, I'll ship it out to them. And if they don't, we'll give it away again. So... At any rate, thank you so much for all of you out there who have subscribed to the channel and who continue to come back. There's so many of you that I feel like I've got to know in comments, and it's it's really, really appreciated. So thanks to everybody else who's kind of got us to that level as well. So anyway, let's take a look at what's sold today. All right, so first of all, we had, like I said, a slow day. I'm usually looking at $100 in, or $200 in gross sales, and, and I feel like that's that's giving us what we need to have as a family to to kind of make ends meet so that we don't have to get an extra job. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm a high school history teacher. And in the summertime, I can list like 20 items a day. And I try to, to list as many as I can and build up that store. But when I'm back at school, it's, it's a good day when I can list four things. And uh, Blue Ridge Mama can list some things at home as well, and she does. But we don't list as much in Q4, and we hope to sell a lot of what we've listed in the summertime. The spring is actually our slowest time of the year because we haven't been listing all winter, and we have, uh, we've we've been selling things. So spring usually slows down. Plus, I coach baseball in the spring, and it really slows down. Where it's not uncommon to only have three or four sales in the spring every day. In the fall, we like to have closer to 10 sales a day. And today we only had five, so I figured we'd take this chance to uh, to do the giveaway. So the total of uh, $106.40 in gross sales, um, which isn't the end of the world. But it's definitely not what we're used to on eBay, unfortunately. So... One little thing that I often, I don't often talk about because it's kind of boring and we sell quite a few of them uh, every once in a while is these replacement pinballs. We make next to no money on them, but it's easy and it's one listing that just repeats over and over again. We've probably <laughs> made about 150 bucks on these in three years, so we don't make very much, but I don't know. It's just one of those things that I decided to do a long time ago because of the size of them and because they take up no space. So that's one of my uh, crazy things that Blue Ridge Mama thinks I'm nuts for. But here we go, we're gonna make you know a dollar sixty shipping these two things off. All right, so this is an interesting sale and we've had one of these sell, I think, since we started doing this show back in early June. And this is the Christmas sweater and it's signed by Glenn Beck. So it is something that we have a bunch of. We bundled them together with a Christmas sweater book and we sell, we're sell. we selling some in a bundle with the book and we're selling some just like this with a DVD. I think we have eight more. And this was bought by a first time eBayer 
That's not uncommon for something like this. And it's over 1044. So what we did is the DVD price at Goodwill, I can't even remember what it is right now, maybe 250, 299, something like that. And I went into Goodwill and I saw all this stuff. I'm like, you know what? I mean, there were tons of it. There were hundreds of them. They must have had some bulk buy, or maybe the company, you know, did a tax write-off or something by donating it all. I'm not quite sure. But this is something that Goodwill had for, you know, around three dollars. So I went and talked to the manager. And I said, listen, I'll buy them all for a dollar a piece. And, you know, they went back and forth and whatever. And they came out and they sold me all but what they had out there in the in the rack. And and all of them for a buck. So I'm selling them for ten forty four. It is going to be, let's see, two seventy five to ship it. Let's say two dollars in fees. It's not. So uh two two dollars four seventy five. You know, five seventy-five. Let's say it's five. Let's say it's a five-dollar profit. It's really close. You know, ten cents either way of five bucks. So five-dollar profit. And I bought a bunch of them, and I only have eight left. So, you know, if you can buy something like this for fifty bucks, one listing, you know, that's two hundred and fifty dollars. It may take a long time to make it, but it's two hundred and fifty bucks, and it doesn't take up that much space. And you can take the bulk of them and put them somewhere else, hide them somewhere beneath a bed or something, and just sell them off one at a time and keep five in here at a time. So I'm hoping to sell the final eight this Christmas season. I'm not quite sure I will, but, you know. And, and there's another thing, you know. Don't be afraid to talk to the Goodwill and ask them. You know, I've heard some people, you know, I'm a history teacher, so I, I, I have these sayings. I used to coach baseball, and I have these sayings. And I've heard some other resellers say similar things. I think I've heard Lonnie say, um, a fortune favors the bold. I think he's talking about when, he, when he's out there picking. And I feel like it's the same way. If, you know, I have another saying that's, that means the same thing, which is faint heart never won fair lady. You know, you're never going to get to take that girl out on that date unless you ask her, unless you have the courage to ask her. So fortune favors the bold or faint heart never won fair lady. So that's kind of the way I approach yard sales. It's the way I approach Goodwill sometimes on, you know, I'm not going to, you know, ask them if they'll take 50 cents off of a shirt. That's ridiculous. But when they have so many, how long would it take Goodwill to sell all those DVDs? It would take them a long time unless a reseller came along to buy them. And so that's what I did. And they were happy to do it. I've done that on other items as well. So, you know, give it a shot. What's the worst they're going to tell you? No. So they didn't tell me no. They have told me no, but they didn't tell me no on that one. All right, so this is a nice jacket. This is a polo golf jacket. It's the U.S. Open at Congressional, and that's pretty desirable. You know, it's 2011, so it's pretty old, but it, it is in immaculate condition. It's, you know, typical polo. It's well-constructed. Uh, it's got this on the sleeve, and this is what got me interested. So I was at a charity sale for a, a school fundraiser, and they had everything pre-priced and men's jackets were six bucks. And this is a light jacket, but I knew it was gonna cost me six bucks to get it. The place was pretty picked over, but I still found this and I thought, oh, six dollars, that should sell. And it's got a little zipper in the back and a belt that wraps around and it's a size large. And I put it up and it sold fairly quickly. I think I had it up there for 32 plus shipping and I got a sale for 29. Uh, somebody said, hey, will you do 25? And I'm like, no, I'm not doing 25, but I'll do 29. And I got that sale fairly quickly, and I'm pretty happy with it. It's probably about a $19 profit once everything is paid for, maybe a little bit more. All right, so if you've been watching lately, we've been selling these really, really quickly. We're down to six. We had 22. We're down to six. And this is $8.99. We're making about $4 every time we sell one. So it should be around an $80 profit when it's all said and done. And they're really, really small. I like to keep them in this. I don't know if you can see this back here, right next to this vintage sign here. Well, you can't really see it, but there's this little uh, dresser right there. It's, it's pretty narrow, and I keep them in little drawers right there. All the smalls I like to keep in those things. So that thing has been emptied out. So... You know, this is great stuff. You know, I don't know about this being great stuff, but this small stuff is great, and I love to sell stuff like this in multiples. All right, so this is like the definition of long tail here. These are ping, and I got these basically for free. They were kind of a throw-in in a deal. I was selling off tons and tons and tons of golf equipment, head covers, 
for a, for a golf course around here that had given me a bunch of stuff to resell at a percentage is really consignment. And for a year, I sold all this stuff off and most of it sold and a bunch of this stuff still hadn't sold. So I'm like, look, what do you want me to do? Bring it back? And they said, just keep it. And so I've, I've had these and we're down to one more set of these, I think. And so basically these are free at this point and they're only going for eight bucks and you know, that's probably eight ounces, maybe even 12. So I'm only making about $4 on this sale, but like I said, they're free. So I'll take it. All right, this is from a yard sale this last weekend that I have not put on the channel yet. And it was the last one I hit when I was coming home. You know, I don't know if you, when you, you know, watch the yard sale videos, the garage sale videos that we go to, you know, what we're doing on one garage sale for that 15, 20 minute video is about one fourth of what we're doing that day. And so I can't put them all out. I'm hoping to put a few out in the winter time just to remind us how fun yard sales are when we're freezing, unless you're out there in Florida or Texas or California, uh, and you can still find a few uh, yard sales every once in a while. Around here, there's not much of anything. It's just about to come to a screeching halt. And I went to this church sale and they were having a Brunswick stew and I love the fall, but whenever I see the Brunswick stew start coming out, I know that yard sale season is just about over. And I walked in and there were two different sales, one up on top of the hill where they were making the Brunswick stew and then one in like the church uh, little um, reception hall or whatever you want to call it. And there were two of them in there and I walked in there and it seemed like I was the only outsider. It's like they were having a yard sale, but they were also having like a church gathering and a cookout and everybody there kind of looked at me when I walked in the door and I'm like, felt a little out of place. And so I started going around to the tables and seeing, Sophie, what are you doing back there? Get back on that thing. All right. And so I, I felt like an outsider there and as I was looking at the stuff that was there, one woman kept following me around. I'm like, okay. And then another woman, you know, what are you looking at? And they were, you know, everything was priced and they were saying, well, if you want to get this better deal, I just had this vibe that they wanted to get rid of whatever it was they ha had. Like a bunch of people donated stuff and these people were going to have to put it away. It was like 1230 and I just got that vibe. So I started, you know, thinking, all right, I'm going to bundle stuff together. And I got a bunch of DVDs. I got this one, which is brand new. This is Joyce Meyer, and uh, it's brand new. It's uh, Bible study in Ephesians. And this one, I think I paid like 20 bucks for everything I bought, which is a, a really, really good deal considering I got tons of DVDs. I got cassettes. I got all kinds of stuff. And this one right here is going to pay for everything that we bought, everything that we're going to put in the antique booths, this is probably going to pay for all of the cassettes we bought, all of the DVDs we bought. We bought sets of different um, Bonnie and Clyde, and I got Harry Potter 5 DVD set. I got all kinds of stuff that I can either resell on eBay or resell in the booths. I got car radios. I got uh, some pretty cool vintage mugs I think I got. There's quite a bunch of stuff that I think I can make money on. Probably a couple hundred dollars worth of stuff. And this one's going to pay for everything we bought. This one sold for 30 bucks, free shipping. And, you know, that's going to pay for the 20 bucks that we, we uh, spent at that yard sale. All right, everybody. We're going to pick the two winners today for the 2,000 subscriber giveaway. And we have the, the uh, Cincinnati Picker mug. And we have the Garage Flips mugs. And a few other things we're throwing in, including some thank you notes from Reagan. And Turner says he's going to make some too. And whoever wins is going to hopefully have put which one they want first. And then we'll have the second winner second. And we'll ship those off here in the next few days. So let's give it a shot. All right, I'm going to put the URL in here. And then we're going to have Reagan hit the comment button and then select it. So first, Reagan, can you hit the go to YouTube comments and see how many comments? Last time I checked, we had around 60 comments on this. Yeah, go ahead. And it's filtering duplicate users out as well. And it says 66 comments, 66 comments. And we're going to go over here and we're going to hit the start button, Reagan, and we're going to find out who our winner is. Okay, you want to hit the start button? And the first winner gets their pick, and the first winner is 
Teresa Bryan, all right, and you have been here quite a while, and it looks like Teresa is picking the Cincinnati Picker Mug, and we're going to send that off to you pretty quick, so we're going to send you this the CP Mug, and that is awesome, so we're going to go ahead and let Turner come over here and pick another one. Do you know how to use this, bud? No. Can you, can you, yeah, you can. Use your finger. Oh, I just hit it? Nope, you use your finger and drag it over to pick another winner. And then, okay, that's good. Now hit that one right there. All right, hit the start button. And we'll see who wins this one. Sandra McKenzie. I would love either one. I watched both of these guys and really like them. Congrats on 2000. So you're going to get the garage flip mug. And thank you all so much for um, subscribing to the channel. And we really appreciate it. And... Maybe at 5,000, we'll do one more. All right. Just one more thing real quick. Sandra and Teresa, if you would, you could either send me an email at commonwealthpicker gmail.com or you could go to my Instagram and there's links to that below. There's links up in the uh, banner of the channel as well. Or you could go to Facebook and leave me a message there. And any anything that has your name on it and... And if you would, obviously in private, send me your address and I will ship your prize out to you ASAP. All right, now I get to bore you with this symbol here. So, you know, we kind of take our history from the Roman Republic. And this is obviously in Latin. And the Romans in 752 were founded, legendarily founded, by a, a couple of brothers named Romulus and Remus. And they became the kings of this city on the Seven Hills, and which incidentally is near the city I live in. Uh, Lynchburg is the city of Seven Hills, which is a little ironic. I don't live in the city, but I'm close to it. I work in the city. And they ended up being the co-rulers of Rome, and Romulus killed Remus which is why we call it Rome. If, if Remus would have killed Romulus, we'd call it, call it Reem. At any rate, in 586 BC, the Romans got uh, really kind of fed up with the idea of having a king, and they got rid of their last king, and they instituted really the world's first republic. And that republic, of course, lasted until, well, this is debatable, but until Julius Caesar takes it down in 49 BC, and then Augustus Caesar in 27 BC becomes essentially the, the de facto king of Rome again, even though they didn't call him that. And we kind of piggyback on that in the United States in the idea that we are not going to be ruled by a king, but we are going to be ruled by essentially law, and we are not going to be ruled by a tyrant. And uh, just some other things in history... Uh, you know, John Wilkes Booth, Booth, when he killed Lincoln, shouted this, which is, you know, not exactly uh, <laughs> those crazy actors, you know. Um, at any rate, there's the story. So Commonwealth Picker, of course, this is one of the things that is the uh, emblem of Virginia. Which you can see inside of the Virginia there. And so it's named Commonwealth Picker for that reason. But it's also, you know, we're sharing our ideas. We're sharing our bolos. We're sharing our experience as resellers, and that's kind of why I decided to do it. So there you go. I bored you to tears, so get the heck out of here, and we'll see you next time.